an infinite value.
Hey, look! Menu Pong! Who is actually your favorite character in Attack on Titan? And I need to know this for myself, by the way. Oh, god, that's a that's a goddamn tough question. It would probably be Erwin, honestly. I'm a big Erwin fan. I would die for that man. I, if he told me to charge into the battle to goddamn die, I would do it. I, I didn't know Erwin had fans. Well, Liz, I'm gonna let you go and prepare for your game. <laughs> Why doesn't Erwin have fans? I guess we can ask Kitty that in a little while because that seems pretty rude. He looked just like Steve Irwin when Liv told us exactly who he was on Twitter after the show. They were pretty close. Look, if Steve Irwin was in an anime, I could imagine him looking kind of like Irwin, but with more of an Aussie accent you've heard Steve Irwin before. But of course, uh, let's talk about the final game of the day. Peace need to win this to have any chance of keeping that a uh, higher seeding at the moment so we'll see how that one goes for them but of course look up against Kanga who's been playing pretty good at the moment there's there's a, there's a bit of shakiness look we saw them yesterday as well copping that Elta Gravitas so who knows how today is going to go Skimmy yeah certainly uh, it seems to be that these uh, lower ranked teams are their kryptonite and I think it's disingenuous now to say that they're taking these teams lightly certainly just seems like you know teams like Gravitas and Kanga have had uh, the better hand of them um Last time, though, it has been a one-for-one one in this occasion. Last time they faced the, against each other, Kanga did get the better half of them. And it feels like Kanga had a bit of a late surge in form, um, which is really great if you're a fan of them to sort of see how they step up for us, but too. Now, let's have a talk about Kanga because, of course, they have been hopping around the roof, doing a good amount of work, especially over towards Liv. Scott starting to impress us yesterday as well. And Fito, of course, since re returning to the LCO since making his way in to mid with his name change. He's been doing a damn good job. It feels like he seems to be doing a lot of the calling. It seems to make sense when the mid laners do that. And also, look, you need to mention Lemus as well. He had a terrible start to the split. Kind of a bit of a sleeper in terms of the stats for the most part. But then he's finally starting to hit his Super Saiyan form. And of course, look, Lionel has to be in part of that conversation as well, because there's multiple times where we've called him out, said, what's he doing? What's going on? Something's going wrong. But it seems the bot line, bot line, bot lane rather, are finally <laughs> finding their feet right when it's needed. And they've got a little bit of a way to go before split two is upon a skimmy, but yep. it's starting to work out. All of the cogs starting to turn. Yeah, I mean, we've been asking uh, to sort of see what this Lemus uh, Lionel partnership really would look like. They've had both individual moments, but I think it's only been in these recent weeks, as mentioned before, that they've truly come together as a unit. Uh, so many clutch devours from Lionel last night. So many moments where uh, Lemus on that Philios was, was far behind that Draven, but then found himself in a position of power, suddenly with nine kills to his name and a huge bounty, and ultimately uh, just ripping apart that game. So if there's ever a time to continue that run of form from what has been those Ezreal games into that one now, if you can get an upset over somebody like Chan and Beats, uh, a huge, huge accomplishment. Yeah, and look, the, the two questions we have is, are Kanga going to be playing for fun? Kind of like what we saw with Mammoth earlier. I feel like there's a, a reality where that happens. But also, are Peace going to be relying on TikTok again? Because they copped an L yesterday when they tried to go for something more normal. So maybe TikTok is the place for all the strats to be at, Rusty. I think TikTok uh, definitely has been a little bit of the undoing of Peace. Uh, to be fair, it is 1-1 for the tank Nocturne builds. Also, hmm. the, the funny thing for me about this game is that Peace is really only losing to the bottom of the table teams. So yeah. this is genuinely a dangerous game for Peace. And I don't know if they can have fun in this one. 
They probably do have to be deadly serious to have a shot. Well, someone that hopes they're going to have fun and hopes that they're going to get the W is probably Kitty because Peace has been letting it down. Kitty, do you have a bone to pick with Chaeon? No fun allowed, guys. This is a really important match for Peace, so there's no <laughs> fun allowed. I'm going to bring in Chaeon to question him on how much fun he's going to have. So, Chaeon, we saw Hello. Ezreal Karma from Peace drafted twice against Gravitas last, well, in the previous games, and we actually see little success with it. What is going to, well, what was the reason behind picking Ezreal Karma two times in a row, and why no more Caitlyn and Lux? Oh, oh why are you asking me this question? Oh, I don't want to play like, Ezreal anymore. <laughs> oh no, just joking. <laughs> uh, well, because we just want to like practice, practice this comp, because like, they can like focus the enemy jungle, come to gank ball, and if no die, it's very good. But yeah, we, we, we did bad. Yeah, and why are we not picking Kaden Lux? Because I think uh, Kaden Lux is quite the same, because there's no difference between like these two comp. Like both can 2v3, but yeah, we just want to practice more champs. Well, that's nice to know as we head into playoffs, get all the things out of the way. But I believe you've also played a fair amount of games in the Chinese server. So is there a huge difference between the Chinese solo queue and the um, solo queue in OS that we play? Uh, I mean, the OC server like, is waiting too long if you want to play again. Like on Chinese server, if you want to play again, just five seconds, can find a match. I can, I can just literally play 10 games a day on Chinese server, but OCX server I can't. It's waiting too long. And and Chinese server also have a lot of good players. The learning phase or mechanic is so good. Well, hopefully we see yeah. the same laning phase and mechanics coming out of you tonight, Chaeon. Best <laughs> okay. of luck in your match against Kenga, and hopefully we see you on the other side. Okay. Thank you. Look, he, at least he was polite about it, okay? Like, oh, I'm stuck at the bottom. Maybe I need to go and get those two-second pops, even Can though I, I only have to wait like two minutes anyway. My biggest gripe with the Chinese server was not the, the queue times, because they were exceptional. It was the amount of queue pops that were declined. Like, nothing yeah. has made me more angry than queuing up to play on the Chinese server and having literally 35 pops in a row declined while people try and match into each other. It actually infuriated me. I stopped playing one day because of it. But was it still much faster than waiting 40 minutes yeah, in man. OS yeah, and what? then when it pops, someone doesn't? Oh, I mean, I streamed one time over in, in China, right, on the Chinese server, and the first 50 minutes of my stream was just getting Q-pops. Okay. Yeah, game. So <laughs> okay. That's pretty solid. Now, uh, something else that's pretty solid is the Dare fan vote. We love it. I especially love it because it means you do my job for me, and I'm all right with that, except when you get it wrong. Then all of a sudden, we've got issues. Chat, so make sure you get it right for this game because who knows, is Peace going to be able to pull it back and bounce back after a rough loss yesterday? Or are they going to rely on those TikTok strats and just have a bit of fun? We did hear from the interview, thanks to Kitty, that they are just limit testing a little bit, you know, getting practice with different compositions and sometimes it doesn't go as planned. It doesn't go as smoothly as the comps that they are solid with. So... I guess we'll see if that plays any effect going over towards the playoffs and the best of fives. But let's have a look at our predictions. Giddy, tell me, where's it going? And is it actually going to go to peace? I'm just inhaling copium at this point. I don't know if peace is going to win anymore. I'm, I, it's literally a burger flip game. You don't know who's going to win. But I'm going to hang on to my last thread of hope for peace. If they lose again, we're going to have some words. <laughs> well, you did try to pick some bones there before. You did try to say some words to Chaeon. He was having none of it. He said, don't remind me. He doesn't want to play it anymore. Skimmy, thoughts on the matchup? I'll give you the chance to give us the percentage here. Yes. Is it like a 70-30 or, or should it be a 90-10? <sighs> That's what I'm really trying to figure out. I was I was hovering between 60 or 70. I, I feel like I'm leaning more towards 70-30. That first time that Kanga won, it was a freakish performance from Chang Yonari. Um... That was the difference maker, in my opinion. The second time around, it was a lot more, as you'd expect, from Peace. They certainly have had their hurdles, but I think uh, even despite the Kanga rise and form, I still feel like Peace are a little bit too good. Yeah, and look, this one definitely means a lot for Kanga because they've had a shaky split. They've had a couple of random roster changes throughout, and you know that they've tried to make this five work, and it has been looking very good. So the more practice they can get in these stage games, the better. 
going into split two. Unfortunately, they are way too far down the ladder that they can't qualify for playoffs. We've already got those teams locked in, but the positions can still shift. I just need to scroll back. It is Peace need to win this to lock in that second position, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they've got that head-to-head -head PGG, and this one, I, I it means a certain amount for them. Uh, I'm not too sure how much that is indeed, but I guess we are about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to close out the group stage. It's time for the fourth and final game for the day. Enjoy. It's time for Champ Select. Yeah, can you believe it? Nine weeks have just uh, flown by. Lots of competition, different metas, different comps, different team strengths finding their momentum or fighting their form. But it all comes to a close with this single game between Kanga and Peace to close out that one-to-one head-to-head. -to -head. Look, Skimmy, I can tell you that it went faster than I thought because I just assumed we had 10 weeks. Uh, and here we are. <laughs> I think I got to like week <laughs> seven and was like, oh, wow, hang on. Like, yeah, we only have two left. Uh, so yeah, look, last game of the regular season before we kick it off with the playoffs. It also means the last time we'll get to see Peace, I uh, rather Kanga, not Peace, uh, in the LCO for this split. Let's look at the bands they've gone through with so far because Caitlyn is not a champion that we've seen very much in pick band at all. Uh, Jinx is going to be banned away alongside the Zeri, so a lot of AD focus. Uh, Aphelios still definitely up and available. Yeah. So is the Ezreal Karma tech that Kanga seem to enjoy for themselves. Clear direction, though, to try and target Fido with the Vex as well as the Cassiopeia. And I think it's a solid point to raise about the Caitlyn, right? The fact that they have been Peace, the only team to really play the Caitlyn Lux. Much like Direwolves have been the only team to play the Lucian Nami. Now, the Lucian getting hovered. I'm not going to try and jump on that bangling just yet. We'll see if they do decide to go for it. So it would seem like a very uh, interesting early pick for them, all things considered. Kanga, though, going to go for the rise. A strong pick that we saw Fido certainly excel at mm -hmm. by finding a huge CS lead last night. Yeah, the rise pick's great. Uh, there's obviously going to be a potential response here by Appy, who will go for the Ari, uh, just in terms of how we saw... Ryze versus Ari go earlier today. If it's in the hands of Tally, Ryze seems like it just wins that one, Skimmy. Uh, but you never <laughs> really know. Though. It depends on the hands of the players uh, and how comfortable they are with those champions, especially because it was Kyose's Ari. Like, you know Ryze does well in that if Kyose is losing on Ari. Uh, yeah. I was going to say 2-3 is usually the point where you would see, like, the Ez Karma pick together if that's what they're going to go for. But looking for a poppy, you would expect, like, a either the Aphelios or, like, a Nautilus even. Third as an option, Nautilus into bands, certainly possible. But we're getting some oddball champions this time around. See me? You certainly are. Yeah, we certainly are. That uh, Poppy has been stolen away from the, the clutches of TN. Going to be picked up here by Kanga. Now, the question now is go to where is it getting played? Because we have seen it play topside. Uh, we have seen it elsewhere in the world played in the junk position as well. Whether or not Scott's got that one tucked away for a rainy day, we'll have to wait and see because. AD carries have been locked in and confirmed too, so now it does go down to limiting that support champ pool. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Poppy jungle into Lee Sin, so it, it definitely is a matchup that you could play pretty successfully, right? Almost everything Lee Sin has is mobility, fundamentally, in his kit, the Q and the W are just aren't usable if there's a Poppy that exists. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing it go straight into the jungle role, and I do think that flexibility is nice, and the fact that it's a denial from TN. There's almost a part of me that thinks, imagine picking Poppy into TN of all people. Like, isn't that just inting? It's like picking Draven into Lemas. Yeah. Like, you know so intimately what that champion does that you probably know the best ways to deal with it. And if they're making mistakes on it, if they're overstepping. So, lots of perfect play would be expected if you're up against TN doing that. He's also red side with a counter pick. Yeah, and uh, I feel like those two are going to have a, a nice little battle between the two of them as to uh, who can come ahead on that one. Both very aggressive, both very carry-minded. What I do actually uh, like about the bands from the side of Peace, though, is they've removed a lot of the utility in terms of those support bands, right? Removed the Fresh, removed the, uh, the Time Kench as well. Removed those tools that can really try and get a teammate or even Lemus specifically out of harm's way with the Lantern or the Devour. Well, they've also removed champions that deal with Nautilus specifically, right? So they're almost trying to bottleneck Kanga into a Karma or a Lulu here. Which are the kind of the options that you're looking towards. I mean, you could go like the Leona route. I don't hate the Leona, but Leona or Aphelios isn't the best duo. Uh, so yeah, you could see they were a little bit pressed there for options. And they're going to choose to go for the Braum. Now, now the Braum... 
fine for lane, fine into Zaya in concept as well, right? You put the door up, feathers aren't going through, so you're not going to be able to rip the feathers back. That sounds fine. There's not a lot of auto attack centric champions on the composition right now. So they need something that works with it other than the Aphilos, you would have to imagine. I guess the concern does become though, once you're starting to group up for those team fights, the piece uh, seemingly rather nimble. How much uh, value are you going to really find with that Glacial Fissure, especially if the Camille's coming in too, right? All these champions from Peace darting all across the map from multiple different directions. And you're saying, well, I'm just trying to shut down one key target to allow our team to pounce upon them and take them down. I mean, I'm looking at what Kanga have, right? A lot of single target damage to blow somebody up. Yes, there is going to be a little bit of AoE later on, uh, but that's going to primarily come from ultimates. And so the Akali is also going to be picked here into a Poppy. I mean, Poppy's W stonks are just to the moon. But it's a Graves, presumably, versus Akali as a top lane matchup, uh, which is, you know, a very heavily pushing Graves lane, uh, where you expect a couple of plates to be seen up there. But we'll wait and see where the dust settles, Skimmy, for these drafts and for these compositions and where they actually end up. Because you never really know when teams are having a bit of fun and trying new things. Anything's realistically possible. We've seen Graves mid, we've seen Rise top lane. We know Graves can jungle, we know the Poppy can top as well. You don't actually know until now. Yeah, it would seem quite nice, though, to have that uh, Poppy in the jungle. We saw Lisa play it once upon a time into Chiefs when they played the Jarvan, and you could see how much fun Arthur wasn't having that one, unable to really connect with any of those uh, flags and drags. Same could be said then for the Lee Sin, same for the Akali. Uh, Scott is going to have his work cut out, finding those moments to uh, land that W. So, uh, looks like that's what we set it on, is what we expected. Braves and Akali topside, that should be a bit of a fun one for those two to juke things out with. But in the mid lane, it just feels to me like the uh, the mid lane cheater tempo, right? You know, we're not really here to lane. We just want to push and roam. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of roaming from both mid laners, 100%. There's going to be a lot of proactivity as well. I'm actually looking towards the rune choices from Scott here because a lot of poppy junglers will be going for the Predator, which is, again, a very key sign of they're being super proactive running around on the map. There is also a possibility before we get into the coach interview that there is a level one because Braum, one of the best level one champions, and Nautilus likes to stand and deliver if you take that fight on. So don't be too surprised if we come out of this graphic straight into some kind of level one setup, uh, or it could even be a late invade. That is Braum's specialty. Well, I have to reference what you mentioned last night, which is uh, perhaps it is one of those uh, speed run impossible challenges of can we get in a quick coaching interview before a first blood takes place? Wait and see what happens as we uh, load ourselves into the rift for what is the final game of the group stages here for split one of the LCO. Nine weeks of competition, one team making their way through the playoffs, fighting for the second seed for side select. And Kanga just on the outskirts, missing out on top five, waiting to see what they can do come split two. Well, I do have Midlord on the line, ready to have a quick conversation with us talk things peace and talk things LCO. Midlord, I mean, how's uh, how's things going for the team? I mean, how's it, you know, the, the vibe, the feeling, the, the mood in the camp with playoffs next week? Uh, yeah, we still need to like, try hard, make make like everyone improve a lot. So that's, that's where we can play this game. <laughs> it's been quite frustrating then to take a few of these recent losses since what, it feels like week six. Yeah, true. <laughs> We're doing so yeah. bad this week. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't want to rub it in, but uh, I certainly thought, you know, it'd be interesting to hear uh, how the team has bounced back. Uh, on a final quick note before we do jump into this one, uh, anything in particular that really caught you off guard here in this draft? I mean, we look at the Poppy jungle, for instance. Was that a surprise? Yeah, actually, that's a surprise. Like a Poppy jungle. Well, let's see what it can do. Well, I appreciate your time as always, Midlord. Pleasure speaking with you. Wish you boys the best of luck in this game, and uh, we'll catch up for playoffs. Thank you. We know who studied Sun Tzu's Art of War. Doesn't reveal strategies, mate. <laughs> no. Mid lane all in, level one. Oh, look at this, Fido! That's crazy. Uh, it's actually, like, when a, when a Ari, or rather, when Ryze starts W, you know that he means business, but it's literally an E start from the looks of it. And just straight up all ins at level one. Because normally, right, you'll have W, you auto W, auto, you've got phase rush for auto attacks as well. I think that was also a W start from Appy. Has QW now level. W is meant to be high max damage output, right? Level one, it's 150 base damage, which is one of the highest in the game for a single ability. But Fido's got him covered. 
Fido's fake to ward placement. We already see one in the bottom side of the river. Yeah, Henslow's playing to that side. This is wild. Lisa level two just straight up crosses through mid, shows his hand. There is going to be a ward that shows Scott, but he's going to have a CS, or rather a camp lead. And if he can get to the lease in before that camp, it would be three to two. Uh, but I don't think he'll be able to do that. So if they meet, it will probably just be level three champion. Quite huge as well, because look at the, the pressure in mid and bot. Fido, as well as Lemus and Leonel, would be able to deploy to back him up nice and easily. He's going to start things off here, and as I uh, mentioned, here they are to back him up as well. And I feel like Peace just have to watch this. Peace are going to full collapse here, actually, just from the looks of it. Chang'e going to get spotted. Appy on a big flank. Scott has got it. Going to get dragged back here by the Nautilus. Appy looking for that charm. The door goes out. Charms the Brom, not who they're after. Scott, fancy with the flash. Slamming him into the wall. But should he have the damage to follow things up with? They got the Glacial passive. They found the stun, but not the kill. And it looks like the blue buff was secured, though, by Scott, and he's going to be able to at least force the Scuttle Crab control, and Lisa has to consider a reset here. He is it waiting for that Grom, so we'll just be able to take that one from the looks of it. I really, I would have liked if Scott went straight to the wolf camp. Like, straight up. Doesn't even stop to sweep that ward, just walks it to the wolf camp. You've got priority so early from your team, I feel like that was a window. But it ends up just becoming a really big skirmish at the blue buff at level 3, right? Everyone just meets there, it's a 4v4, and nobody dies. Yeah, it all boils down to, once again, that craziness that happened from the get-go in mid lane. Beats channeling the hex tech, or oh, the hex flash, rather. This is actually laning. And he also, oh, I'm, I'm mad if I'm Chayot. Lisa legitimately just queued a cannon that was being dematerialized by Beats and takes the relic stack and gold of the entire cannon to push that wave in. If I'm Chayot, I'm actually just fuming in all, in team chat right now. Mental boom already. At, at 63 four gold, in. just take it from me, bro. The game's over. I'm mental boom. <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand, Lisa, that the game's not going well so far for you, but surely. Like, I know your blue was stolen. Hit. But you're stealing my cannon. Now, there was just a bit of miscommunication there from Peace. He was queuing to push the wave in and maybe wasn't aware that the dematerializer was going to be used by Beats. Yeah. Which, speaking of, uh, Beats has gone for Glacial Orphan as his primary tree, so it's not going to be the Aftershock or Guardian into the Brawn. Uh, I don't mind this at all. There's a lot of close and low range champions, so the Nautilus Glacial Field should have stocks, right, on reducing damage to allies. Means he also has the Hex Flash with the Dematerializer and Cosmic Insight. But if you go for the Bickies, actually has the single sustain tree with Second Wind and Resolve Secondary. I like his Rune Page a lot. And I've been yeah, criticizing a lot of Nautilus Rune Pages, Skinny. I know you have. I know you have. Every single game Every I've been seeing you in chat. Game. What are their runes? Where's their Hex Flash? Is it there? It's not. I'm not happy. Rusty Rants. So, I mean, you don't always need to have Hex Flash, but I think a lot of people have done some really silly runes instead. You can go stopwatch, I think, in some matchups, right? But uh, here we are. It is what it is, as uh, a wise man once said. Uh, the Glacial Augment, though, I think, yeah, it's a really good point, talking about just how many champions are going to be locked inside those uh, fields as to what really allows Peace to do. They've got a lot of champions that want to get stuck on a key target. I'm looking at the Lee Sin, I'm looking at the Akali. Given any uptime, the DPS will skyrocket. But I'm looking at mid lane and I'm waiting. Okay, level six is there. Are we going to start to see those crazy map flips? Tele uh, teleports have already been burnt to get back to lane to keep up pace. And they are keeping each other in check. But not a lane to attack just yet. Yeah, I think actually looking at both team compositions as a whole, there's not a real core identity that isn't just going to be involved with 5v5 fighting. I think that the Graves and the Rise, right, definitely have potential to go side lane. Uh, Lived also has gone for a, a full magic resistance type build, so he's definitely trying to not just survive lane, but deal with both solo laners. Speaking of... Look at that, yeah, Tien Cobb it. He's got the perfect execution ramped up. R2 is there! You knew he was going to go for it! Does he live? No, just out of range. That's when he wishes he had flash. He's gone TP Ignite, and he's got first blood. Yeah, you commit the Ignite, you commit to the kill, and to the entire play, the one-for-one -one trade. It happens. Neither teleport's available there for both pop laners. We're just getting a lot of solo kills here. Lisa has walked back into bottom again. His entire play, this whole game, has just been resetting waves, pushing waves in for cheetah recalls, and crashing minions for his team.
Yeah. He's actually just become a second support, and Scott on the Poppy has just been power farming. Just hoovering up jungle camps, and is absolutely living life. He's so fed. I mean, you're looking at his individual CS. He's ahead of the Akali. He's keeping pace with the uh, with the Zaya as well. You're thinking this is going to be a very tanky poppy to deal with if it's not shut down quickly. I think the person who suffers the most is probably Beats, just because of the experience that Lisa is, you know, poaching from waves. Oftentimes, Beats will spend a lot, lot of map movement working with jungler or getting vision for team off resets where everyone else goes back straight to experience. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Beats feels a little bit behind in experience compared to the average in the game because Lisa has been catching some, which compensates for the CS deficit that he has compared to Scott. Seven Grace will be though that Cheyenne is level six to match that Ali mess. Quietly and L being ahead. There's a window potentially where Kanga can look to utilize that advantage and claim this Herald and break open what is already a gold lead. Hobby ult though. And get a little bit bigger. Ah, uh, he's been Nautilus. Oh, Lisa. Oh, looking for it. They're going to pick that one up in the possession of Scott right now. Beat separated from the team. Lisa in the pit. And it's just as easy as that, really. Pick up the objective and disengage. We did see a pretty funny interaction there that I think we do have to note, Skimmy, for the future as well in this game, is if Poppy uses her ultimate as Nautilus throws a hook out to connect to a wall, if the ult hits before the hook does, the ult comes straight back. It never actually goes anywhere. The hook takes priority over the Poppy ultimate. We did just see that happen, and it's certainly possible that that continues to happen as Lee Mass has got Brawl nearby and was hunting for a play. I think we saw, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you remember, there was a, another interaction like that. It might have been with the Nautilus and Jarvan, flag and dragon away, but still got hooked in. It was a bit of a weird one. There's certainly some uh, some priority going on with how those uh, spells batch, but let's see what Beats can do in this one, because he's back to lane, and he's desperate for some soak. I think it was the Jarvan. I believe that was in the, it was just above the bush, top side of mid. Something like that definitely happened. I mean, to be fair, Jarvan can flag drag while Morgana bound. Like, just tell me how that makes any sense. <laughs> True. Here we are. I didn't actually get to finish my point on this as well. I, the, the one point of difference, I think, between both comps is the, the flexibility of Fido and Liv to look for side lanes. Uh, Appy, I think, wants to work more with the team and try and get picks and whatnot. But everyone in the game is pretty low range in general, right? Ryze loves that. Akali has a pretty good time hitting charms as a result of that. Akali should be able to get some max damage out and constantly be dealing damage. And you can see he's going towards more of a sustained build, not a proto built, like, you know, closing distance burst build. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone's pretty aligned right now and that there will just be a bunch of beefcakes meeting at objectives looking for some skirmishes. And it's about who gets the pick potentially to kick it off or that first little initial play. Or is it just like a huge ultimate from Scott that, you know, separates the herd to make the fight happen? Yeah, breaks them apart, isolates out a key member and uh, able to pick up that kill, as you say. And I'm quite curious to see if they can find the moment. Nice little interrupt there from Lionel, delaying the uh, reset from Cheyenne as Beats does deploy back to mid lane, looking for their play. And they are looking to try and do a bit of a flip, it seems, as they are going back to base and looking to try and find themselves a better opportunity to get themselves ahead in this game. Now, there isn't a dragon that's already gone. That was claimed by Kanga. A lot of vision planted by Peace towards this bottom half of the river. Very quiet, I think, compared to all of the other games that we've had today, just in terms of activity. You know, there's been fights for objectives. There's been map movements. It's not quiet in the sense that teams are happily farming. But it doesn't feel like either team's willing to do anything too bold. You know, they're not advancing too far into the enemy territory. There's a couple of nice red buff wards, but Beats needs to respect. Uh, Beats was the person who placed those wards as well, just quietly. So he set up a really nice barrier of vision, but that's usually placed for either a teleport flank or a Drake fight. Uh, so there's nothing actually there. Those wards are just to get vision of Scott, which really those become defensive wards just placed defensively. Need to keep tabs on where this poppy is. It's gonna be a menace. Got it from the very get go in this game. And uh, if you're Lemus right now, you're loving life. You're able to get a farm lead. 
you're able to continue to play aggressive, utilize the fact that you've got that Gale Force. Always got kill pressure. Yeah, Out comes the Heralds. As they're not going to look to try and take that in the turret, just give him more money. They have the item lead right now for sure in Lee Mass, and they could help him while that crashes, but they're not. Oh. That is terrible. That seems quite illegal to me. They, like, they actually summon Herald and abandon their AD, who wants the plate gold for the crash, and they just leave their AD carry to die. Not the play, and there was nothing for them to gain elsewhere. So... Ooh, that hurts. Hence my That's harsh frustration. words, I suppose. Yes. To have an item advantage like that to be ahead in the lead. You're gonna feel hard done by this one. Here is the slowing smite as the first storm comes on through. There's the knock up afterwards, oh, which is giving him a bonk on the head. Wow. And um, okay, that just happened. Cool. Kanga, gonna make a play topside though. They will take down Tien with a nice little gank from Fido. Yeah, that was actually really nicely done from Fido. Appy's gonna come in just to collect the wave. I don't think he's gonna make any adventurous moves. And it is actually just gonna be 42 gold in the pocket, right? Like, that's only three range minions collected. So as a roam is concerned, this is exceptional from the rise. I will say he was just spotted on a ward. You look at the minimap, Tian's going to take this fight. Lived is actually going to kite towards the rise ultimate and towards the turret, knowing full well the dive is going to take place here. That is super well played by Kanga. But you can see on the minimap that ward in the pixel brush just north of mid lane. Did see yeah. the rise moving with intent. Yep. He got the scent of blood, and he only had one idea in mind. I want to get that solo kill onto this Graves. He's gone back to base, picked up a Rift Maker, so he's got himself that sustain. And if there was ever a consideration that Lift might be going the shield bow to you know, bolster up uh, the Hex Drink. And no, he's gone for Lethality. He's gone for Armor Penetration. He's got the Eclipse. He wants to absolutely shred members down. So, yeah, a bit of a tanky fella, but pump out the... Uh, the damage in the process as Appy jumps in, hits the charm, there's the Everfrost, a lot of CC lockdown, gives enough time for Beats to come in and lay it all together beautifully. At least it can get that killing blow. Now Kangaroo can get a TP to really just pick up a cannon. Yeah, I mean, that was a really nice play by Peace. Uh, they find their opportunity to get the pick. Lisa on a really wide flank and Scott just not quite there in time to get the steadfast presence off or prevent any kind of movement and ground that Lee in. Could have been a potential for something else, but in the end, it is just a nice move from Peace, and they take those because it feels like that's the first real movement that has been with intent to kill, and it's Beats and Lisa getting very active together. Up to see it when a jungle and support player link up together. It just adds so much to the team's playbook. It does and for a Lee uh... Sin as well, Skibby, because that guy doesn't place wards very often. <laughs> well, that's it. Because you want to save them for your ward hops. Ooh, beats. It gives you everything that you need right now. Is Scott not going to find a terrain to wall bang him with? But Lemus going to invite the idea of a 1v1. Now they both got Gale Forces, but Lemus has held his. As he thought he had enough sustain. Wasn't to be oh. there. Lisa coming in. Somebody back this man up. Take that Drake. It's going to go down. It's going to go for a reset yeah. here. 58 HP. It has been claimed. Finally! As Lisa, out of vision, out of mind. The feathers go down. The kills are found. And Peace are stealing a team fight win here. Tien going to be absolutely blasted to the face there. Like a deer in the headlights. Live flashing across the wall and running the wrong way on this map. Now he's in a bit of a ticky tour, but Appy won't entertain that idea. Flash charm, and the dream is over. Yeah, he tries to get through the turret, but Appy's still with a reset on that ultimate. Had the flash in hand, all things considered, we'll just be able to get the flash charm off while under turret. And there's nothing left for Liv to do. Top laners have a really big impact in that fight, actually. Both getting super active onto the map at the same time. It comes down to a play for objectives. The objective still goes the way of Kanga. But that was genuinely a huge fight from Lemes that unfortunately falls to the wayside shortly after. But just the raw damage that comes out of peace. A lot of damage and a lot of control in that team fight to cause nuisance. In fact, Lisa managed to get away with that one. Certainly uh, a cat with nine lives. Let's run it back and see it again, because really, I mean, it starts off with the poppy. 
pretty engaging, but Adamana after this. I mean, that's such a huge blue Infernum ultimate from Lemas as well, right? Follows through with the Gale Force, but Appy's got the positioning. Chaeon has the ultimate there as well to ensure no damage goes on to him. And Tien, with a really nice flank, gets in and just does max damage as fast as possible. Lived will trade his health back, but the fight's lost by the time Liv does. And so they will just be able to win the team fight very successfully. It's little details, I think, that make the difference here, all things considered. Like, Poppy throwing the ultimate out is nice as a zoning tool to secure the objective, but actually using the ultimate, not just, you know, having the, the Poppy Copter threatening it and having a 10 second cooldown after. Yeah. Or even holding it if you know that Peace are going to contest, right? The value is super high then. But unfortunately for them, right, they, they not only try and push Peace away from the objective and secure it, they take the fight afterwards. And here we are. I feel like it's one of those cases, similar to a Blitzcrank, right? The threat that you will have the hook available at any moment that you can posture in a position where you've got to respect uh, what it can offer. And uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately you can see great initial idea, but uh, peace just reigns supreme. Once uh, the Glacial Fissure, as well as that, were gone, there was no peeling on that occasion, and it was easy uh, for Tien to play clean sweet. Kanga, though! We're going to utilize the second hero of the game, going to stay together, going to guarantee that turret will fall on down, and that's going to be their first of the game to match that of Peace. That's going to keep them in close proximity of the gold lead that Peace have found, what, only 19 minutes into this one, and Peace will have to answer this. Now, Lemus is on his own in mid lane. Uh-oh. And I do see a very hungry Akali. Oh, he just missed. That hit, he was on. Yeah, Tien goes for a really quick combo on the Akali there. You could R1 into a Q, right, and just slow him down. Maybe the Gale Force or, you know, etc. could be used, and then you have a free E. But the quick combo is really hard to dodge. Unfortunately for Tien, just goes slightly awry. But it was a really nice angle, really nice looking and really nice attempt from the top laner of Peace. You know, pushes Bot Wave out, has a moment on the map, and just doesn't quite find it. No Praetus today. No! Maybe Yes, no ADC curse in mid lane. Breathe a sigh of relief on that one as uh, Lemus can continue farming quite contently. He'll need to uh, hope that he's got the gold ready for this next fight that breaks out. His chain has just returned to base and completed that Essence Reaver. You know, it's crazy to me how close this game actually is if you look at the score lines of both Appy and Chao. They're farming incredibly well. They're 2-0-3 right now. Both have a shutdown. But still, the gold is basically even. Yeah, it feels to me as if you're looking at Scott and Liv just finding strength in the early game. That's uh, coming on through. No doubt those plates are playing a big factor as well, but you're certainly right. 20 minutes in, and who would have seen this coming? A dead even game. These teams have really been polar opposites of across all split in terms of gold differences at 15 minutes in. There's the route. Fido, oh. he's gone. He's clean. He is clean. Everfrost angle. Just a little bit too good from the rise there. Looking mid. Certainly are looking mid. As Scott just absolutely slams beats into the wall. Where are you going? Well, you're going straight to the base. Take your hands off your mouse and keyboard. And watch from the sidelines on this one. Down for 20 seconds. Dragon spawning in 10. Kanga on two drakes. They would love to play for the sole point. Hey, on oh God. Scott takes a kill from Limas there as well. I'm just a tilted AD carry this game as a commentator. Drake <laughs> going to be started third of the game. Peace to contest this without their support. It's possible. Ooh, that charm is on. Beautiful charm from Happy. And it might be the difference here as the heal comes out just out of range of the feathers. Chen's burnt that big survivability tool. But do Kanga now have their health to even walk back into this one? I don't think so. No, no way. They're just going to have to go back. They're going to have to reset. Appy saves the day. It's just a cheeky little charm angle and suddenly it is not a team fight it is a pick this comes back to exactly what we were talking about when discussing the comps in the draft ari with the pick potential is super high was that a hook from b so. was that a <laughs> <laughs> why not that one was i'm just hoping he didn't straight up point blank hook a wall well i mean if tom kench can dive on the spot who's to say that uh, you know Nautilus can't even yeah, he can do what he wants, man. He's got an Appion Ari on his team right now, and Chayon having a good game. Which comes back to the comps point, right? There's so much close range damage that both teams are going to be putting out. And if that is now a, a 2 0 4 Ari with two full items done, 
you are well and truly into the grass with this Aryan, and it's a big reset angle at all times for Appy come team fight. I think that is the difference, right? The fact that his skill shot is going to benefit him in situations where they are uh, coming in close, where they have no vision, where they are saying, we want to take this Drake. Not sure where he is. It's just a blind shot across the wall. That's all they need. You're not going to find the same success with the likes of Arise, for instance. He needs to be in your face. He needs to cycle for those cooldowns. And uh, he's certainly going to try and put a bit of daylight now between these two. So it's not going to be a free Drake Soul kind of angle this game either. Uh, it is a no. Mountain Soul, which obviously has its values. The teams will be looking to potentially contest that one, but it's not going to be three Drakes into the hands of Kanga, which is like, you know, a 20... Well, in this game, 26-minute all-in team fight requirement or anything from Peace by any means. The game can slow down here. More time can be purchased. More scaling can be considered. Graves, Aphilios, Rise, all exceptional scaling champions. Teleports. Oh, it's a very deep TP. In comes Tien. He's going to have the best inline track to take literally everybody down. In with R1. Instant exhaust. R2 across the wall. Surely. There it is. And here he goes. Diving across the map, blink and you'll miss it. Realm Wolf is there, but where are you going? You're dead now, Fido. He can't do much about it. Peace with superb positioning, able to take him apart from every angle. It feels like Tim was in three different fights at the same time there, just keeping them all so busy covering such extreme distances, but the rest of his team is just putting in work. The Braum, again, we talk about in theory, you can put the door up and stop Azalea from dealing damage, but she just ults when you do, and it's really difficult to keep her locked down. Gale Force for repositioning means is just such an exceptional champion right now for team fights. We'll see how this kicks off once again. Appy standing ready to deliver damage, even though the charm misses and the Q misses, is still going to be able to put in work. It's Lisa, however, that hits the big kick to start the fight off. And it's the fact that Peace have a pinch, right? They're able to get into the mix from two different angles and put in work. And Lemas tries, genuinely does a lot of damage in that team fight. But just Gale forces right into a charm and is absolutely dead to rights after the ultimate connects. No team to stand in front of him. Yeah, and it just feels to me like it was a TP difference. You saw there, uh, Fido coming in from the top side, tried to look at Appy. Appy just darts away, says, well, I guess I need to do something. Uh, flashing across the water, trying to shut down a Sakali. But they were always going to be fighting a losing battle. So elusive is Peace's team comp when left unchecked. And... And a big reason why we're uh, so excited to see this Poppy excel, but it's just so much that Scott has to try and do here. Oh, wow. Okay. Not the target they're after, though. Just puts a door up, it'll be fine. Liv has gone straight for a Lord Dominic's regards here, second. So, maximizing his damage output, but that could very easily you know, be a more of Mortius or you know, a couple of other potential tankier items for the Graves. Sure. I think it's a clear sign that he really wants to deal as much damage as possible. And if they are meeting at a front to back, he wants to kill the Nautilus. You know, kill the Lee Sin before his team dies. And it feels like, in a sense, that is Kanga saying this is a race for damage output. Teams have tanks, teams have carry. He is going to be a carry this time around. Eclipse straight into the more build is also really insane value, Skimmy. Straight into like a Black Cleaver if you want it afterwards as well. You can one hit people while still being <laughs> impossibly yes. tanky. Your one hit tanks, once you start hitting those values, right? Like 60% armor penetration and counting. It'd just be. Uh... Pretty insane, to say the least. But once some sustain, though, you have seen every single time he has been caught by a charm. He's down to 50%. Very squishy, but certainly can deal with the squishies as well. Right now, though, getting pushed away. Has the red buff. Has to group up in mid lane. Fido is pushing top side. They'll have to lose their mid tier, too. Yeah, uh, Fido also is the one who doesn't have teleport, where Liv does. So the assignments feel very wrong here from Kanga. Uh, I know that Tien and Liv are on the same side of the map, so in that sense it's correct. But a Rise Ultimate is not going to cover the same distance as a full teleport. Scott has just straight up hit Baron. Straight up, with Liv on mid wave. Peace yeah. still no. They feel threatened and they have to do something. The Ruffle Copter comes out and knocks away beats. Oh. Liv on the side, 1v2, using the passive to try and get that grit. He needs magic resist, he doesn't care about armor. The Baron's been taken, the Baron's been stolen. Now a fight breaks out, up they go and down they crash. As they're gonna fight an ace. A, a kangaroo have just decided that the game is going to be absolutely burger flipped on a dime. They have just said this is gonna be the largest burger in history. And the game is still trying to keep up with what happened all at once that lived only just gets called in a kill register from the client. 
Baron stolen. All five members dead. And they flip Baron for what reason, Skimmy? For what reason? I'll tell you what, it's menu log meal time, but it's in game. If, uh, if Mac was here with us, that's what I want to be eating. That is a delicious burger. You get the Baron still, you only lose Lisa, and you wipe the enemy team. It just feels like Kanga were desperate to do something. Like the second that they're spotted, you just leave? I know they have an incredibly fast Baron, right? It's red-white weapons, but Liv is mid and can't get to the fight without teleport. Actually, I don't know if it's a visual bug that his teleport actually wasn't available. That would explain a lot of the fire. But again, you know, they just get into the Baron pit. Fight's over by the time Liv was already dead because there is a full health tanky Akali coming in to just tear you apart. I mean, what do you say? It wasn't even close, really, was it? When you look at how healthy it's they all were coming out that one. Supreme burger size. <laughs> Triple XL, multiple patties on that one. Happy flashing across. You get all their skill shots. You can root me, but you can't take me down. Thank you very much for knocking me away. It comes to end, <laughs> traveling through space oh, and it. time. He fought. Oh, he's gone. I've peeled. The only thing you peeled is yourself because you're down and you are gone. And look at that. Lived. Let's just watch this entire team crumble and Peace are knocking out the front door. And the game just explodes to an 8,000 gold deficit for Kanga. Tien just teleported top to push in that wave while they Baron push bottom. You've got four members dead for 10 more seconds on the next person to spawn. So it does seem like it's still going to be a bot lane inhibitor. Tien trying to be as efficient as possible. Oh, Chayon look at just that. dies. One Q, and Chayon's just down to 50. Right in the face. Oof. Oh my god, they're teleporting in for a is. flank. From... There's no shot. It's We're instantly revealed. The play's off, but they're still making it. They're still forcing a note. They're feigning the realm. Well, peace aren't deterred. They don't care. They say, why would you entertain this idea? Tien is they're still, still fighting. going. Tien is still top. He has no TP. Lemus has to answer this Akali. So why are Kanga going in? But Lemus can't answer Akali. Oh no, what is this? Peace turning around saying this is a weird team fight from you, but we'll take it. Scott, look how low he is. Lisa jumping in. They can't find it. The charm going sideways. They can't connect. Fido, he's given up time. The glacial fissure knocks them both up. Chen and Appy very low. Lisa keeping lived honest. And this is just a fiesta right here. Beats goes golden for a second. Lived with the fader collateral damage. Dude, I don't know. And I mean, at this stage, I'm not sure how to play by play this one because <laughs> it just kills across the board. We've just got a bunch of 1v1s happening all at the same time. Tia dies tanking multiple people with the world's widest flank. <laughs> Dodges a Poppy ultimate and still ends up killing Poppy. Uh, Lemas is alive. If there is one thing that I could take away from this game, it is that Lemas is alive. He dealt with the Akali, he lost an entire inhibitor for it, but that's just perseverance. That's focus and retrospection, Skibby. <laughs> yes. He's a real gamer. He really would have been an LCO broadcast without that one coming at the top of our head. And, uh, it's actually yeah, unavoidable, yeah. isn't it? It really is. Uh, I don't know what to say about that team fight. Was it a team fight? It was just multiple skirmishes. It was just everything. And um, yeah, 31 minutes in. Yeah. This is where we find ourselves in. Two hits gone. Just a, it does feel like peace have it, but I mean, <laughs> do you really? Just a couple of Burger Boys back to back. The question is what Kanga do from here, because now they're at a point where they don't have anything. They are 9,000 gold down. They've got three items on their Graves, and Graves can legitimately one-hit carries. That is a 907 Chion, just quietly achieving on the Zaya, Unkillable and dealing constant damage. Appy hasn't died either. It's no. absolute clinic from the mid AD of peace. I think you can tell who wants to win. They uh, were the ones you had it nice and early, right? Both were 2 0 and 3. They are looking for that flawless game in a game where everybody has died apart from them. In they go to try and put that final nail in the coffin. On towards the mid lane Nexus, or rather the turret, as the inhibitor will fall on down, leading them into that Nexus. Kanga trying to find an angle with Scott on the flank. Easier said than done. He's been forced to try and run away. Hook goes out, doesn't connect, does not matter now. In come the supers. A while away in top side. 
They're going to be coming in step fast bot. Hey, listen, it's a three item Aphelios. Any game is losable from here on out. Needs to be a huge Lemus gap, though, if you want a, an Aphelios to get everyone over the line here for the side of Kanga. But still, it's a good scaling champion. Again, just to quickly touch on the scaling, there is pretty insane scaling from a Graves and a Rise. That's not to say that Peace have none. Scott's also been trying to flank while he is a poppy that wants to protect his team with the W, but I think the reason is he wants to try and hit an ult to split someone off so they can try and force a play. He thought they can get a very fast Baron take. Look at this. Just three of them. Oh, they've gone in! What was that? <laughs> Dude, I... <laughs> What's happening? What is happening? Well, that is a million dollar question, and it just feels like such a perfect way to sign us off, to close out this split, as it really has been a, a collection of everything. We've had upsets, we've had clown fiestas, we've had stomps. And on this occasion, we've had a game of two very different tales. In come the supers one more time, potentially the final time, as Baron is active, Peace are hungry, and they're in a 5v4 situation, working in harmony with these minions to take down these turrets. One gone, a second to follow. The base is in shambles, and the Nexus is under fire. Lemus in trouble, forced to go golden. Coming out of that one, instant gale falls away. Has a flash, has a heal, doesn't matter. No, the base is done. And at 34 minutes in, the group stage is complete. And it ends up being a pretty solid game from Peace in the end. I mean, they were they were definitely hand-gifted a cheeky Chrissy present in the Baron pit, but once they have the lead, they don't really look like losing it. It's little things, you know, like the teleport from TN, knowing with confidence that his team's going to be able to threaten the bot lane inhibitor, going for the top one at the same time. So, you know, those one percenters are definitely something that I would say Peace have over Kanga, and will be a major part as to why these games feel incredibly one-sided. Yeah, small details certainly do add up to the broader picture there, Mac, as uh, that was a game which, uh, I mean, it was hard for me to call at times, but yeah. what was it like to watch? That was fun, and that's exactly what we wanted, right? Some kind of crazy game where Peace should have won probably 10 minutes earlier, but then Kanga decided to flip the Baron, and that Baron shouldn't have been flipped. Look, let's talk about the early game first. Kanga did some solid things initially to try to get themselves an advantage, but Peace answered well, uh, answers expected. And if you have a look at this specific moment, there is so many champions just dashing around everywhere. It's like everyone just has some next level mobility, probably T and uh, the most dashy of all. But of course, this is the moment. Have a look at the health on the Baron, by the way. Scott, he has himself a smite. It hit 800 before the Q connected from Lisa and then he still managed to hit the kick and the smite on the way in. So I don't know what was going on. Scott seemed to have his mind somewhere else, worried about the rest of the red team just coming on in at them, and then things just went downhill from there. So, look, even if they did get the Baron in that fight, they would have lost the Baron buff, Then it might have made these next 10 minutes or so that little bit easier because, of course, Peace were just waltzing in, taking fights, taking names, and then, of course, whatever the hell that fight was down in bot lane <laughs> funny, five minutes ago, that was... <laughs> That was something. Oh, the, the observers couldn't keep up. Nobody could keep up because there was fights happening from, like, you know, the first turret and bot lane all the way into the bloody blue side base. So I don't even know what the hell was going on there, but I think Peace won. Am I correct in that, Skimmy? Uh, you are. So Thank there you. is that constant in life that we can at least be uh, definitive about. So that's always nice. Uh, 34 minutes in. They do get it done. Yes, they're a bit of fun. Uh, and they were winning on multiple fronts. So uh, happy days for them. Maybe not the cleanest victory thereafter, but a victory nonetheless. They've dismissed at least one of the demons that have haunted them from the lower side of those standings. That's it, right? Look, Kanga doing a very good job towards the end of the split. Things got shaky, but of course there were some good signs of what they can be working through uh, throughout, of course, the break, which is where they're going to be sent now because that's it for the group stage. That is it, all done and dusted. And with that W piece, have locked in second position. So they will have their choice of sides next week in that second and third bracket match for the playoffs. Oh, I can't believe it's playoffs next week. This this split has gone so quick already, hasn't it, Kitty? 
Anyway, so <laughs> that was a great game to end on, boys. We grabbed yes. a win for peace. So let's bring in Abi for the interview. So Abi, congrats on ending the split on a win. How are you feeling after that clean game? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a clean game, but I'm still happy like that's a win. Good to know. Well, you've been playing a lot of Ari in this current patch. In what way does she feel better mechanically and why is she so popular? Um, she, um, she have like a really strong, um, like, um, scaling, uh, and she like, she clear wave really fast as well, and she's like really hard to get ganked after like she hit level 6, and overall it's just like a strong pick. I believe that R used to level Q first when she was level 1, and now a lot of Aries are actually leveling W first, so why is that? I think it's because... W changed and now it's like more easier to hit the target uh, like if I order the enemy mid and then my W will like just go with my order so it's like pretty good trading tools level 1 and perk uh, electric queue well I'm definitely going to be trying some Ari in my solo queue games I'm sorry to the people that actually get me but we actually see Peace often picking three carries, uh, mainly being Tien on those carry champions like the Akali and Camille. Instead of drafting a more traditional frontline comp, is this going to be a blessing or a curse as we head into playoffs? Uh, it's more like um, Tien is like obviously he's like um, he's good on carry champions, and. We probably will keep the style or probably change because we already like know we're good at like the tra traditional comp and we just yeah we just um putting everyone on that like different champion testing out uh, testing well i'm excited to see what peace has in store for us as we head into playoffs well api i'm gonna send you off and hopefully we get to interview you again for playoffs thank you Always good to check in with the big man in mid lane for peace. And look, not only was he the interviewee coming through there, he's also the Dare MVP. So he's going to be very happy with that to close out the group stage of split one here and send them off into the playoffs with a perfect scoreline of 6 0 and 12. Doing a whole lot of work and just being the key piece of the puzzle today. Him and Cheon. Both, I believe, went deathless on this Cheon copped an L towards the end, but I'm pretty sure they both went clean. So, uh, of course, he gets the old honorable mention. But look, 75% KP with a decent damage shit to boot is pretty damn good, isn't it, Skimmy? He is. I mean, he's literally looking like Superman, both in-game and out-game there from the pose. Uh, the charms were just landing. The picks were there. It was a comp where both teams were hungry for those skirmishes, hungry for those close-quarter combat moments, but... Ultimately, the charm was just a little bit too good. The lockdown layering between that and the Everfrost, the follow-up from the team to come together to uh, to punish. And uh, yeah. great win. Yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, but of course, it's not just about the play or a player of the match, the Dare MVP. It's also the player of the day that we love to have a chat about. And it's going to be the last one for the regular season. So, of course... What do we think is going on here? Rusty looks lost. Can you remember anything from no, today? Dude, or was it all I the don't know play Dire Wolves. I don't remember what happened. <sighs> I honestly don't even remember what happened. I've written down draft if I need to, but... You, well, you don't need to look at the draft. We're looking at the, at the plays, Rusty. Are you, you, probably, you sound like you need to lie down. What about you, just give me anything? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, a good rest sounds quite nice. Uh, look, I'm drawing a blank as well. Um, usually, actually, I write down plays as they happen in a notepad so I can actually refer to it and sound big brain, but yep. I've, I've failed you, Mac. I do apologize. Oh, it's okay. okay. What about you, time. Kitty? Did you did you also zone out today with all the entertaining games that were going on? You didn't write things down. You just enjoyed it as it all unfolded? Um, um, I, I didn't actually list any fights down, so I'm um, sorry, Mac. We don't have any answers coming out of this. Okay. Game one, something well, I happened. I listed Lock down the yes. answer. And look, Rusty, you're actually correct. Game yes. one, something did happen, and it was the play of the day. Uh, it was Chiefs taking a team fight and winning it at the Baron Pit here against Die Orbs. You all seem pretty spent, so look, we'll just watch Dragku stand off to the side. Man's pretty low, but he'll still have some kind of impact. 
surely. Maybe he's just the bait to keep the blue boys around because all I'm seeing is a whole lot of blue health bars just dying bloody everywhere. Big team fight coming through. Goodo going back for seconds, but it's not enough. And Drag Koo, there he is, the bait. Catches him on the hook, line, and sink us. So, Direwolves, it was a valiant attempt at sneaking away the Baron, but again, it just reminds you of the situations where... Everyone knows what's going on, all right? There's a, there's a ward sitting right there that you didn't clear and things got dangerous. You didn't take all the protocols. You didn't take all the steps and there's big, big L lost from Direwolves. You know, who knows? Maybe if they got that Baron or maybe if they turned on that team fight instead, it could have been a whole different ball game because they had the numbers initially with Dragku uh, with such a low little health bar there. However, uh, look, of course, that's something to go on VOD review for Direwolves. But we have the standings. We have where everyone's sitting mm. on the scoreboard finally here at the end of the group stage on the LCO. Oh, what a damn group stage it's been. Let's reminisce, huh? Chiefs, they started second. They went out pretty well. But then there was just this like point in the second round where they just started to fire up. We thought that them against Peace was going to be like the greatest affair we'd seen. And then Chiefs just absolutely blitzed them out of the park. Pentanet, they're in third, uh, having a bit of a shaky, shakier sort of situation going through the split. But look, we're coming through with 15 to 6. They ended on a very strong note. Of course, uh, they have the same scoreline as Peace. But Peace has won two of the three games. So they've got that head-to-head -head there. And that's why Pentanet down in third. Fourth and fifth, however, Order, they got a dub today and Direwolves didn't. So Order do manage to jump up with this fourth position. So they get their selection of sides going into playoffs. And that locks in our top five. Kanga, a very solid end to the split. Mammoth, the same can be said. And Gravitas, a big upset yesterday is a big W in my book, Skimmy. It is, yeah. I mean, it's really looking like uh, we've got ourselves shaped up for a really good playoffs. Uh, teams finding success. Late on into the season, some of these teams down the bottom there showcasing that they've got unique drafts, they've got unique styles. Maybe with the pressure of playoffs not dangling above their head, they do look a little bit more uh, at peace. So uh, it's certainly all to play for going forward into next split. But as far as things go playoff ways, uh, I feel like we've got a, a really strong representative to go to MSI. Oh yeah, out of all these five, someone's got to go and I guess we'll see who it is. But to get there, we've got to get through the playoffs bracket. So let's see where everyone's sitting. And it's going to look pretty similar to yesterday if you were watching. So, uh, round one is going to be that second and third place game up against uh, the first day, game of the day. Look, it's getting late here, all right? And then that second game of the day will be Order and Direwolves. And that's for elimination. So, look, uh, Peace and PGG obviously being played first. Winner of that goes up into the upper bracket, continuing on the take on the Chiefs, who get to sit out for day number one, which is, of course, going to be next Wednesday. And that's going to be a damn fun time for multiple reasons. But we got two best of fives on one day, Rusty. How excited are you? Oh, mate, you know, I've, I'm just born to cast 10 games back to back. You know, oh, yeah. I couldn't be more excited to uh, to kick that one off and see it go the full distance, Mac. But it is a very <laughs> exciting day of games, jokes aside. I couldn't be more excited for the actual day to come back around. Yeah, it's going to be a good whole load of fun. Kitty, out of those two games, what one are you most excited for? Honestly, I'm excited for both games because I think it's the first time we've seen in a really long time where all the playoff teams are actually quite similar in skill level. It's anyone's game out there for this split's playoff. So yeah. we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, uh, well, next week. So I'm excited for all the games. Yeah, it's going to be so good. And it's the best of fives. It's what all the teams are talking about literally at the start of the split saying, ah, best of ones, we'll just get through them. But we're a best of five type of team. However, you guys at home, you're probably a best of five kind of bloody content creators too, right? So we've already had like three or so from the fans and we've got two more to make it five. Maybe we've had more than that, but either way, uh, we've got a clip to have a look at, so let's see uh, what it is. So it's going to be Buzz Oz with the old Raze and Drag who combined oh, for about no. six kills in oh, one minute yes. under Bot Tower. Oh, this was only a couple of weeks ago, right? So every single focus retrospect. I didn't want to read that. Anyway, you guys loved it, didn't you? A bit of focus, a bit of retrospection. And this was that game too, right? This is when Dire Wolves were just, oh, not making it up. Actually, this is when Bulldog was yeah. in support, so it had to be a little old now, Skinny. 
This is when Rays is literally having a moment of magic saying, this is the reason I and the rest of the region call me the perfect player. I'm just outplaying everybody. Now, I've mind controlled you, so you realize <laughs> that the ultimate doesn't exist. There's a triple kill. Happy days. Uh, I'm laughing straight to the bank. It was a lot of fun. And I remember that was when Dragku was absolutely popping off, hitting a whole yeah. bunch of knockups and, yeah, just doing doing work down in that bot lane, being the support that Rays needed. Now, uh, we have one more to have a quick look at as well. So... Let's roll the clip. Let's see what it is. It is, of course, Monty Ball and Maximize those Smurf <laughs> past in TBH. Yeah, true. It's true. Yeah, what true. What do you get for that? Uh, well, we don't get a clip, Rusty. That's, that's the, the, that's the secret. We'll, we'll get, um, maybe we'll get him back. Maybe. I don't know. Let's maybe. I can ask some people about that, see if we can maybe Smurf him back up, you know, turn him real small, put him on a plane, get him back to Sydney or something. Maybe. Could be something we could do or, or not. Maybe you could stay at home. And he smells. That's what I got told anyway. Oh, true. <laughs> sure. Rusty, you have a good nose on you. Am I right? I haven't <laughs> smelled him, dude. <laughs> I'm remote. What do you want from me? How am I meant to smell, smell him smell from, from Melbourne? Me, That's... But he smells good. I didn't say he smelled bad. But... That's all I'm saying. Anyway, guys, look. That's it for the regular split. That's it for the group stage. That's the paddling as well. And look, I've lost my marbles yesterday. I'm about to lose them today. But I am going to wrap things up. Anyone? Anyone want to say anything before we jump on into playoffs? Have you had a good time, Kitty? I've had a great time watching these games in the past two days, Mac. You know, quite a roller coaster for all of us. And uh, I would say my favorite game is still Kenga versus Mammoth. That is going to be the best one, I think, this split. Hopefully, we get more yeah. games, actually, in playoffs. Maybe, hopefully... Surely they won't be Clown Fiesta is ish, well, right? We could have up to a maximum of 10 games next Monday. And to not miss it, make sure you're there. Make sure you're strapped in and ready for a long <laughs> afternoon and evening of games. I oh, know I'm certainly ready. And uh, I'm going to see you all there. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay hydrated. And we'll see you next week for playoffs. What is it? 5,000 health tallies on a flank. Drag you at risk. Might be dead right off the bat here. Very lucky to be alive. But no vision comes across. Battle on Sikyo. Can he find a kill? No. Evaporates the spies. Dead and gone. The Baron is there. It's going to be claimed here. By the side of Direwolves. But he expense if it wasn't high before by losing those turrets. You've now given the cross raise a triple kill. And you have lost all. Now they're just trying to see who can find that kill. It is to be Puma. That's his favorite sword. Oh, great restraint. Here goes Bio. Negative. Shoves back to. Voice dodges it. Slams him into the wall. And Bio. <laughs> Bio Panther with the fadeaway boulder. Just throws the building at him. 7k gold lead is going to be pretty difficult to deal with as the wallet can absolutely continue to slap them. You'll see Yuri every four seconds slap at him. Yep, he certainly got that uh, voice speaker connecting on that key side. And both of them from afar, ready to lock them down. And there it is again. He sniped out nobody. They're all so low they can't hard engage because they're just getting ripped apart from afar. This Herald has found infinite value. The Ruffle Copter comes out and knocks away beats. Oh. Lived on the side. 1v2 using the pass to try and get that grit. He needs magic resist. He doesn't care about armor. The Baron's been taken. The Baron's been stolen. Now a fight breaks out. Up they go and down they crash. As they're going to fight an ace. Hey, look. Menu bomb. There are quite a few animes that I personally like. I think Made in Abyss is very underrated. I think the music, mm, it's crisp. It's got them some beautiful music, but it's also made by an Australian guy, fun fact as well. So, you know, that adds cherry, cherry on top. Um, what else is there? Uh, I think Ancient Magus Bride, not bad as well. Uh, that's another banger. And obviously Attack on Titan. Anyone who wants to watch Attack on Titan, watch it right now. It's the best anime ever. Best story, best goddamn fight scenes. 